Hi, this is Greg with Best Choice Trailers. Today we're going to take you for a walk around one of our dump trailers. We're going to show you some maintenance tips and tricks for your new trailer to make sure you fully know how to use all of its features. So we're going to start out up front. This particular trailer is one of our heavy duty models, so it comes standard with an adjustable coupler. So there's two main types of couplers on the market. They're stamped and cast. This is a cast coupler and it works backwards from what most people are used to. So most of our dump trailers are going to be equipped with a 2 and 5 16th inch ball. So you're going to insert it up into the coupler and unlike most couplers, back is closed, not forward. So what we're going to do, we're going to put our thumb on that, put it backwards, and that's in the closed position. This coupler does come standard with a built-in safety pin. If a trailer you purchase from us doesn't have a built-in pin, we'll be more than happy to give you a free safety. Okay, so if it is adjustable, it's going to take a 15th, 16th inch nut to make it go up and down. Okay. All of our trailers are going to come equipped with safety chains. Some new trailer users don't understand that safety chains do need to be crossed to be legal in the state of Pennsylvania and most surrounding states. If our trailer's got brakes, and most trailers uh, that are dump trailers will have brakes, it's going to have a standard breakaway system. So unlike a typical trailer, a dump trailer is going to have an onboard battery that's going to run your breakaway battery. So what that's intended for, if you're going down the road and your trailer disconnects because your coupler snaps off or because your ball's the incorrect size, it's going to pull this pin out. That's going to activate the battery, which is going to create a short and lock your brakes up, keep your trailer from uh, skidding down the road. So one thing we do have, if you don't want the standard equipped breakaway, uh, which does have a long cable. Some people are known to let it drag on the ground. Uh, there's a new uh, product to the market made by Flash. It's a stretch cable that'll keep it from dragging on the ground. Lasts you a long time. Another thing that we've got in stock by way of accessory would be a uh, coupler lock. This particular universal coupler lock will go right on your trailer. Now there is a downside to the coupler lock. If you got a smart thief, all he's got to do is take two bolts off, put a new coupler on, and he's down the road with your trailer but we do stock coupler locks. Also, where the safety is, we have these in a locking mechanism as well. If you want to use a locking uh, uh, hammer, we've also got those in stock. So a lot of our dump trailers are going to be equipped with a drop leg jack. If you've never used a drop leg jack, there's a pin. All you got to do is uncouple the pin, and then that inner leg, just like this one, is going to go up and down inside the trailer. It's designed to keep you from having to crank 10 to 12 inches or more of your trailer. Okay, most of our trailers are going to have a front mount toolbox that's lockable. The keys are generally going to be clipped on the back side of the lock mechanism, so if you can't find your keys, that's where they're going to be. Okay, this trailer is also going to come equipped with a 110 volt charger. Many of our dump trailers nowadays do have a 110 charger, so what you're going to want to do periodically is to plug that dump trailer into a 110 source. Now a lot of people don't give the dump trailer near enough time to charge on that 110 volt battery charger. Most of your trickle chargers are going to be a 1.5 amp and the battery is going to be generally a 140 amp hour battery. Do the math, 140 divided by 1.5, you're going to need about 100 hours of charging to have that fully discharged battery topped off. Instead of doing it overnight, we recommend doing it during the course of a weekend. Okay, so on your actual dump remote, You've got two buttons on most remotes, it's going to be up and down. One common question or one common issue that we get people to call us with a day or two after they buy the trailer is, hey, I went to use the trailer and I couldn't get the bed to go up or down. So this particular fob is nice, it's got an up and down button uh, with arrows and, and a name on it, although some of them don't say up or down. One little trick we found is most dump key fobs up is always the button closest to the entry point of your cord. So in this case, there's your up, there's your down. Some people also make the mistake they only give it a split second. Uh, they're afraid of doing something incorrectly. So you got to keep your finger on it for a second or two before it's going to come up or down. Okay, one other thing that we do also offer are wireless remotes. We put a wireless on this one. So some wireless remotes are equipped different than others. Some people think that their wireless remote's not working, when in fact, most wireless remotes have a, uh, a safety on it. So after about 10 minutes, it'll turn off. Sometimes they have an on-off button. Sometimes you just gotta hold your thumb over both buttons for a period of about two to three seconds to reactivate your remote. So again, if you do got a wireless remote, it's kinda handy. 
most times wireless remotes are good for somewhere between 50 to 70 feet. They are kind of nice because it allows you to walk around your trailer while you're dumping to make sure your gate's not going to be impacting a pile of debris next to your trailer. Okay, so another common issue that we see on dump trailers, if you ever get fluid in your toolbox, generally it's because your battery does not have sufficient charge. So what's going to happen in that instance, your motor generally is going to spin it's going to turn and it's going to get your bed almost the whole way up and then the battery's going to cut out. And what's going to happen whenever your bed comes down, you're going to get fluid in your toolbox. And most people will come back to their hydraulic unit and see uh, fluid in their box. What's happened is your motor is not able to pull sufficient current from the battery that it's not going to run the motor. But what it will do is the solenoid will get enough juice to open the coil within. So it's going to open up the solenoid and gravity is going to take care of letting the bed come down. What that's going to do, instead of circulating fluid, which is what happens on a power up, power down, it's going to act as a gravity and essentially dump the fluid out of the, out of the uh, hydraulic hoses and back into the battery box. So what you need to do in that case is charge the battery up for a weekend, get that uh, 100 hour charge built into the battery, get it topped off, and then you're going to want to put fluid in your uh, in your uh, hydraulic unit. So most hydraulic units take ISO 32 non-foaming hydraulic fluid. At most times any non-foaming hydraulic fluid will work. You don't want to mix and match different types of hydraulic fluids as some do use automatic transmission fluid as well. So one common mistake we see some new dump trailer users make, they'll put their ratchet binders inside the toolbox. We'd highly recommend that you don't put your binders inside the trailer box. As you can see here, there's not a whole lot of extra room for them. You also got to keep in mind that you've got a positive battery terminal there. Some people that we've seen, uh, they'll burn their battery box out by putting a ratchet binder inside and they'll work between the positive and negative. One common question that we get from different users is, how do I best charge my battery? A lot of people know and understand that your battery is going to get an auxiliary line charge through the 7 pin plug. So contained within the 7 pin plug, one of your 7 pins is going to be for a charge wire that's going to charge your onboard battery. One thing you need to know is that's a 12 gauge line charge which gets you about 1.5 amp charge. You would need to do hundreds of hours of driving to charge the battery fully. What we highly recommend for commercial users would be the use of an auxiliary wire harness. We stock these in two and six gauge. What this is gonna do, basically you would have one end on your trailer, you would hook it up to your positive and negative, and then you would have another one on your truck side. That's gonna give you either a two or a six gauge line charge. It's gonna charge your battery much faster. It'll also give you a direct charge, just as you would run a winch. Okay, we want to show you tarp deployment. So one thing on our tarps, we use an a, a anti-sail bar. Anti-sail bar makes it nice because you can walk this back with one hand to the back of your trailer and deploy it with one person. So you're just going to pull your sail bar back to the back, depending on which trailer you buy. It's going to have a C-clamp back at the back. going to walk to the front, crank it up, and you're ready to go down the road. We also want to talk to you a little bit about serviceability. So all trailers, it's important to give them proper service. One area that sometimes gets missed, our axles all have easy loop hubs. And easy loop hubs are quite simple. They're in fact quite easy. So you're going to take a flat bladed screwdriver and there's going to be a black plug in the end of your axle. Of course our dump trailers are all going to be equipped with electric brakes. One thing that's important is that we don't over grease our bearings. So inside here you're going to see a grease zert. So what you're going to want to do is take a grease gun to that zert and you're going to want to put grease on it until you see fresh grease come through the outer bearing. Different trailers take a different amount of grease but you're generally between a 5 and a 10 count. I started to see fresh grease come out, so it's time to stop. If you keep on uh, 
if you keep on greasing your bearing, what's gonna happen, you're gonna push your inner axle seal out and you're gonna get grease on your brakes. So as soon as you see fresh grease come out, it's time to stop. So on most of our dumps, we've got a lot of grease, uh, grease certs for serviceability. Generally, most dumps are gonna have them on the back hinges, so it's important to get those. We've also got mainframe certs, which are gonna be at your back mainframe. Some of our trailers are gonna have a wet bolt kit on your axles where you have a zert. Of course, both or all your wheels on your trailer are gonna have a zert. Depending on the manufacturer, we're gonna have a grease zert on the top of the uh, top of the jack. There will also be one on the side of the jack. Many times we'll have them on the back of the toolbox. And then depending on the hoist type, we're also gonna have zerts at the top and bottom of the hoist. So if it's a dual piston, you'll have one at top and bottom. If it's a scissor, you're gonna have a handful of zerts on your scissor hoist. One other thing we'd recommend whenever you're storing your dump trailer, some people don't like to have, uh, have your dump trailer be a water collector. If that's the case, we'd recommend that you use your jack to lift the trailer beyond level so your water is going to run out. We recommend that you don't store your dump bed in the up position. That's a no-no. What's going to happen over time, you're going to get moisture uh, on your cylinder and it's eventually going to be a rust collector. It's going to get rust on it. We recommend storing your uh, Store your dump bed fully retracted. So one other thing uh, some customers have done in the past, they've uh, pulled the breakaway battery as a parking brake for the trailer. We'd highly recommend not doing so. What's going to happen, we've got a deep cycle marine battery with a lot of amps behind it. What's eventually going to happen, it's going to burn the brake lines up on this particular trailer. It's also going to cause your battery to always be uncharged. So we, again, we'd highly recommend not using your breakaway as a way to park your dump trailer on a hill or uh, some sort of an incline. So again, this is Greg with Best Choice Trailer.